Hey guys, and today we're going to be installing Mac OS X Snow Leopard. Um, I've already unboxed it because I figured it was a software unboxing, and as you can gather, it's quite dark, so the, light, the light's not very good. But we're just going to try this and take from it what you will. My installation is going to be a little bit different than other installations because I'm going to start from a clean install. I've already um, put my uh, Snow Leopard disc in, in the computer, turned the computer off, and I'm just about to turn it on again. In OS X, it's a standard thing that um, if you turn the computer off and press C during the boot sequence, it boots on the CD. And this is no different to Snow Leopard. So that's what I'm having to do. So I turn it on and hold down the C key. During the process of me doing that, mm -hmm. going to look for a CD and it's going to um, boot from the CD. That's why the Apple logo is taking longer to appear. Now, when this video started, I, I pl I'm planning to do a clean install, and to this second, I still am. But um, I may I may decide to do an upgrade, just as uh, a sentiment to how much effort there is in re reinstalling an operating system. But it just depends on what I feel like, really. Now. I think there's some um, kind of because I bought the twenty-nine dollar upgrade. Now I think there's some legal problems with um, doing a fresh install, but that's not going to do because it's exactly the same disk. So I'm just going to um, wipe my hard drive, do a, do a fresh install, and hopefully everything will work. I haven't done fresh install in nearly two years now and that's and that's kind of a sentiment to just how good the Mac is and um press the stop recording button. So we're now getting the standard Snow Leopard install screen and I'm gonna pick the install Snow Leopard in, in install Mac OS X in English option and click the button. Now this is gonna load a kind of Linux live CD um, environment <sighs> with the operating system. Now, what I'm going to do to wipe it is go to utilities, um, disk utility, and I'm going to wipe my hard drive. Now, mm. I've heard I've heard rumours that this works, but I don't actually know that it works. So I'm going to wipe my hard drive, and hopefully Snow Leopard will. will reinstall on that disk. So I'm going to click my hard drive, go over to the erase option and choose the uh, the default option and I'm just going to go into the uh, security option and I'm just going to do what would be the equivalent in Windows of a quick format and I'm just going to hit er erase. I'm officially now saying goodbye to Mac OS X Leopard. So first it has to unmount the disk because obviously it was obviously it was mounted when it was in use by my operating system, so it's got to unmount it before I can do anything. It's creating a partition map that's needed by um fingerless formatting the disk. The disk is now formatted so I should now be able to go ahead with the installation. This is the painful part where they actually work on it. So it says install Mac OS X to set uh, or 10 sorry to uh, um, to set up your installation of Snow Leopard click continue. So we're just going to do that. We're going to agree to the license agreement uh, I'm going to click on my hard drive 
which is now freed up, and then click install. It's now installing. Uh, snow, snow leopard. We'll we'll be back when it's close to finishing installing. Okay, okay, so we're back, and I missed out a large chunk of the installation process, <laughs> including the welcome video, because I was at dinner and my computer restarted automatically w without my knowledge. Uh, so. When I've come back the next time the next time user attention is required, we get this screen and and it's welcoming us, giving us a few steps to set up your Mac. This is just what happens when you when you get a new Mac, and obviously a new Mac with Snow Leopard. Um I should also say that I've um uh, this is actually my my second fresh install. So the first part of the video you saw was um, actually actually me doing the first install, but I but I since erased the progress of that and, and began doing another install because um, I'd forgot to do some things like remove the language packs and remove Rosetta, which saved a bit of space. But but anyway, the the. The cameraman, who was my brother's, getting a bit agitated. So we've got this welcome screen. So screen us for our um, country. Part of what I did was um, remove the additional languages. So it's only given me those. But I'm just going to hit United Kingdom because obviously I live in the United Kingdom. And then I'm just going to continue. This thing going to ask me for my keyboard, which... I don't understand why they have to select British by default. That's not very intelligent, because most people who were from the United Kingdom wouldn't have a US keyboard. So that would be my suge suggestion to Apple, not as if they're watching this video. Um, and I'm just going to continue again. It's going to ask me, um, have I already got data? Now. I'm going to try, um, no actually I'll say do not transfer anything, I've actually got all my applications stored on my time capsule but I'm just going to leave it for now Nick, continue. So I'm setting this up like a fresh map, it's automatically giving me the opportunity to select my network right from the um, thing and there's only one network in my area. And it's automatically selected the default network that happens to be the correct network. So I'm just going to continue. And if I had a password, it would allow me to authenticate, but I don't. So it's automatically going to configure my network. And because one line is going to ask me if I have an Apple ID, but I don't. So I'm just going to continue. I want to skip the registration, so again, I'm just going to continue. Um, and now it, it's it's going to ask me some account, account details, so I'm going to enter my full name. It, it fills in my account name for me. This will be used in the home directory. And for a minute, I'm just going to ask my Jack, Jack to point the camera away from the um, computer so that I can type in my password. It's starred away, but just in case you can see what I'm typing on the keyboard. Um, I 
Okay, so if we just go back to the screen there, I'm not going to enter a password hint and I'm just going to continue. I'm just going to ask me if I'm, if I'm sure, but I'm just going to click continue. Gonna gonna connect to Apple for some reason and talk with Apple as I quote and authenticate the information. So now I'm gonna ask me to mm. take a snapshot for use in, in my account. So I'm gonna I'm gonna s smile there. And just take a picture for use in my account. Um, I could also choose from the picture library, but I'm yeah, that should be fine. So I'm just going to continue. I don't want to try mobile me, so I'm gonna hit. I don't want to try for mo uh, mobile me through right now, and then it's gonna figure out my default time zone and give me the option to set time automatically, which is a new feature in Snow Leopard, which I'm gonna go over in my Snow Leopard coverage, and it's gonna figure out the current time zone for where you are based on the Wi-Fi network you're connected to and it, wherever you are it will ch change your time zone and it says it was unable to determine but we, we know it was because it says British and summertime London England so I know that's right so I'm just going to continue and it says thank you so I'm just going to go and wait for it to officially boot on the Snow Leopard operating system. I don't think the menu bar has finished booting yet. But yeah, it looks like it has. So that was that was a boot in only a few seconds. But anyway, that's the end of this video. So I'm going to be doing some lengthy screencasts going over exactly all the new features in Snow Leopard and I'm going to go and install my software right now. So, th thank you for, for watching this video. I'd also like to thank Jack for filming. Um, thank you. And thank you Apple for providing us Snow Leopard. See you in the next video guys.